Uh, okay, uh, we'll look at it. It's, it's loud. So uh, I want to get this started, and I've, this is maybe the second time in my life I've used a mic, so bear with me on that. Um, so thank you all for coming today to our Writing Fellows panel. Um, I want to kind of talk through uh, some things here, and then obviously I want to turn this over to um, these guys to talk about some of the incredible work that they've been doing this semester. Um, but let's sort of talk a little bit about uh, what the Writing Fellows program is for those who are here who maybe don't know. Um, so, uh, and I'm putting my glasses on to look at my, my overly highlighted notepad here. Um, so essentially students um, take a one credit practicum course um, with uh, the, the Writing Fellows coordinator in this semester, that's me. Um, and during this, this uh, practicum, it's really interesting because students have the opportunity to kind of um, talk through the theory, the theoretical, and put it against the practical. Um, and so a lot of our conversations in class sort of focus on like what was happening um, you know, in, in your sessions and how does that fit with what we've been talking about this semester. Um, students are embedded in a class, so they're assigned um, an instructor. We have two instructors here today who are going to sort of talk about their experiences with their um, fellow embeds. Um, and, you know, when, they are when they're assigned in this class, they're working with students and they're, you know, helping these students in those classes on, on writing projects. Um, they're helping them to develop ideas, to sort of rethink what um, the writing process is and to sort of, um, you know, kind of change some of that thinking, right, to move them along incre incrementally, to, um, you know, help kind of process some of the prompts that are, you know, being assigned, um, and, you know, to, to really think through some of those ideas and those projects. Um, additionally, um, our writing fellows have um, office hours. So each week there are uh, a number of office hours that they have sort of set up and they, they regulate and maintain and students from those classes then visit fellows to look at projects. Um, the instructors oftentimes make these, at least one of these sessions mandatory so students are sort of making appointments and fellows are connecting with students to work through those projects. Um, you know, as you can imagine, there are a number of benefits that, um, you know, the Writing Fellows experience and have, you know, we'll certainly talk about. But the thing that I really want to surface here and bring up um, that, that sticks out for me um, in, in my experience as the first, in my first year as um, the coordinator for this program is to, um, you know, talk about sort of three big things. One, Writing Fellows are, you know, really engaging and identifying um, some issues in projects and sort of making, uh, prioritizing what needs to happen, which I, I think is a, a really valuable life skill to think about that kind of problem solving, to see, you know, issues that are ongoing and to kind of make some decisions about what would have to happen. Um, those, those ideas or those problem solving skills certainly would translate outside of academia. Um, you know, I think too, the fellows are in this really unique an interesting class where they're able to obviously do some reading on theory, right? We're reading about good writing, uh, good tutoring practices. But we're also in this, this practicum class to be able to see again how that, how that works and to talk through things that maybe don't fit, you know, with the reading and to be able to have, you know, a kind of um, a, a positive experience thinking about like what one student's experience was or another fellow's experience was and another. Um, that can be really beneficial. Um, the third big thing here, I think, that, that stands out to me is um, the, the skills uh, these fellows are developing, these communication skills that these, these fellows are developing. And if you think about this, I, can't, I guess I can't underscore this enough, and I, I, I'll you know, try not to scream into the mic on this, but um, you know, think about what they're doing. So they're developing the ability to deal with, negotiate, um, and work with their peers, students. And to, and to kind of talk through stressed out student issues, right, in their papers. But they're also developing skills with their, with their um, tutor peers. And they're, you know, developing relationships in the practicum to, you know, sort of help each other out, to strategize and think about approaches. And three, perhaps the most significant thing is the, the ability to have a kind of, to deal with an audience of, 
a, an instructor and to have an ongoing relationship with an instructor, particularly for you know, a young person to develop with that, um, I have to say seems like a really translatable and really valuable um, set of skills to have when they think about moving outside of an academic context. And so like those communication skills I think really can't be, um, you know, can't be kind of highlighted enough. I have another page of notes. Um, so before, I, before we turn over to the panel um, and, and let them sort of say far more interesting things, um, I, 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 I'm sure that you know, everybody here has some experiences to talk about faculty and, and, and fellows, but I do want to note that this semester all four of our fellows are embedded in um, science classes, which I think is really interesting. Um, you know, particularly sort of as the, the, the program, the Writing Fellows program has you know, developed, evolved, and moved. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce everybody, and I'm going to kind of read from my notes here to make sure I get, um, you know, uh, details and bona fides correct here. But, um, so to my right, I have Anna Bass, who is an assistant lecturer of biology, and um, Stephen, who was in, embedded in that class, with, it was a genetics class, correct? Um, also, so Stephen, who was embedded in Anna's class, uh, is an English major, and uh, was also a student in my comp class, what, two years ago, a year ago? Last semester. Last semester, why not? <laughs> uh, far out. <laughs> um, I have Sinead Scott here, who is going to be an English major. Super cool. Uh, and Sinead was, actually you were in my class last year? Okay, and you worked with Emma White in Biology 104. Um, to my left, it says turn left, I have uh, Margaret Fryer, who uh, Associate Lecturer of Biology, and um, the class you had a student embedded in was Bio 104 Lab. And uh, hey, there's Courtney Keller, who uh, was embedded in uh, Margaret's class, and Courtney is a, a Biological Sciences major. Okay, this is just in. Um, and, then, uh, and then to her left, I have Taylor Buswell, who, had, who was working with Dylan Turner and uh, in a Bio 104 class. Yep. And so, you know, Taylor had this, I, I want to note this before I, I sort of shut up and let Anna take over here and we'll go down the line, but I think it's really an interesting thing. Um, Taylor uh, started out as a student in my comp class moved into uh, a writing fellow role in my class, embedded in a comp class, and in fact was um, a writing fellow to Stephen, who was in that same class. And then, you know, Taylor pivoted to working in a Bio 104 lab class. So, you know, Taylor has some really interesting perspectives, has seen a number of angles on tutoring in different disciplines, which we'll talk about, I'm sure, today. Um, so other than that, um, I, I guess I will kind of pass the mic uh, over to Anna. Can I not use the mic? Can I use my teacher voice? Your call. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I don't like to hold things when I talk, except chalk. <laughs> um, I guess uh, what I would tell you is what my involvement in the Writing Fellows Program has been. Is a, it's been pretty transitional too. I started out, um, originally I was teaching the Bio 104 labs, so it was a small group, working with a small group um, and the various writing assignments that we had in 104. I subsequently have moved out of 104 and am now teaching a 200 level genetics lecture class. Um, and in that, we have also have a lab and we have writing assignments in there, but I have a major writing assignment in the lecture. My um, class is a large class, so it's 72 students this semester. And as you can imagine, with writing um, assignments, that can be a really big problem, uh, trying to do that on my own. <laughs> so having a writing fellow in that context was amazing, to have that ability to um, actually continue to do that type of a, a writing assignment in a large lecture class. Um, so for me, one of the significant aspects of um, a writing fellow, it, one of the first ones I think of, because uh, we were instructed to think of significant things about this. Um, so my first significant thing was the ability to include writing assignments uh, with large classes. That is um, 
that's important for me to be able to do that. In that sense, and also not being necessarily a writing assignment about genetics per se, but more of a, um, an essay, a different type of paper, not a lab report. Um, something different where they have to think outside the box instead of just thinking about facts of regarding genetics. Um, the second thing that I found really advantageous with having a writing fellow is the um, feedback. And that feedback at two levels. So for the first one, the feedback from a peer. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've had students not want to talk to me about something uh, to do with writing, but they're more um, likely to talk to a writing fellow, one of the fellow students. And I think that's critical, um, such that I've tried to get peer um, TAs in my genetics recitations because of that. So that's what it's an uh, impact for me. The other um, advantage of that is, is the feedback. Students, I think, have this concept of, um, at least I've been in my experience in science, <laughs> that they write something and then they turn it in. And they don't understand or they haven't been taught, at least um, in, in science, and maybe that's our fault, that you write, you edit, you review, you rewrite, and then you edit again and then maybe you turn it in. <laughs> So having the writing fellow reinforces that type of thinking in that. And I have, um, I see a change in my, um, in the outcomes from the students that I had in both, I saw it in 104, and I've definitely seen it um, in, gen in genetics. Even though these are supposedly upper level students, um, writing skills are not, um, they're not as good as I would like for them to be, but I see it's, it's getting better. So those are three significant things I would um, say about <laughs> your writing fellow. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> so I guess, um, as Dr. Bass said, I saw around 70-ish students um, over the course of the semester. A lot of them um, at the same time uh, consecutively. Saw like sometimes five or six people in an afternoon. Um, and through that, I was able to see a lot of different personalities um, <laughs> with different people. Uh, and I guess you have to be willing to adapt to those personalities, because uh, some people are very on board with the process. They're there. They want the help. Um, they want to know what they can do, um, while other people are kind of a little, a little tougher to get through. They're, they're. Uh, a little more reclusive about it, I guess. Um, you kind of have to work with them and try to pull them into the process. Um, and then I guess at the same time, similarly, then you see you see them at different points in the process. Uh, some people might come in with a, like a full draft that they think is ready to be turned in. They might just say like, hey, I just want to proofread. That's all they want, sort of thing. Um, you still got to read through it, obviously, and work with them on it. But uh, while well, other people might come in and they're still kind of in the developmental process and they just need someone to talk it through with and they need someone to ask questions to. Um, so I guess you see you see them at all levels in the process and you see all these different personalities and you've got to be willing to willing to adapt to it, to adapt to the circumstances. Um, which I guess is different from when you're talking about it in the classroom and what the writing fellow is going to be like and then when you finally meet your uh, meet with your students on day one. I guess that would be my, my take on it. Excellent. Excellent. It's so interesting to hear you guys, you know, side by side because you're you know, working with the same students, right? And mm -hmm. to, to see these angles on it. Yeah, um, he's, he's definitely right about the personalities. Sinead, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I think you're up. Um, so I worked with a Bio 104 lab with Emma White as the instructor. And going into it, I was really nervous because I had taken Bio 105 and 6, but you know I'm not a content expert, and I was afraid that the students would, you know, not really take my advice into consideration and maybe not respect me as much um, because I didn't know the facts, the information part of it. Um, but as I started to work with them, I, re you know, I was able to um, tell that or explain to them that I'm here to help them become a better writer. And so it's not about what they're writing necessarily information-wise, but about how they're writing it. Um, 
And so, you know, as writing fellows, we work with more generalized skills. And I think this really helped me, um, well, it helps the students, because instead of focusing on like the little facts, like this is wrong, this is right, we're able to look at the paper, the lab report in general and as a whole piece, um, and really work on the global organization, which is something that we focus on a lot in our class. Um, you know, when, and it's the step before the little editing and the sentence grammar, um, the localized errors. Um, but I think, and I think that working with the students, um, I was really able, it was really rewarding at the end of their project to see what the first draft was and not this, this, the final draft, um, like how far they come in their writing um, and to know that you were part of that, um, the reason that they got there. Um, so overall it was definitely a really rewarding experience and it's definitely satisfying to know that you can have the ability to help someone become better at something. Yes. You have, you have oh, your own mic first, your, your own side. Okay. Oh, yeah. Is it on? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you guys can call me Peggy if you want. You don't have to call me Margaret. Um, so, um, it was a couple of years ago. Um, Catherine Frank came into my office and asked me if I was interested in having a writing fellow because she really wanted to extend this to the, to the sciences. And so, since then, it's been two years, right? I think. Well, it could be longer. Could be longer. We don't know. See, this is what happens to us. Um, <laughs> but it, it's really been a great benefit to the course that I teach, which is a freshman level, non-majors <coughs> course, and also serves WCHP. Um, and it's actually changed the way that I teach the course. I've redesigned the way we do the labs. And uh, when I started uh, my first year as having a writing fellow, we attended uh, occasional meetings over the semester, um, which was great because we got to talk with other people in other disciplines that, and learn a lot just basically on how you're looking at students' work and, and the focus, and yeah, so that was really great. And then since then, um, this year in particular, there's been some really great fall, uh, flow through coming from the practicum. So what you guys are talking about is reaching us, or reaching me anyway, and so I made another change in my curriculum this semester that I hadn't had before. So some of the changes that I included in there were, first, I stopped taking student work, student drafts home and looking them over and marking them up and passing them back. We did a much more interactive type thing that we learned through the Writing Fellows program, which was to sit down with the students, look over their work, talk about the ideas, what they were going to do, what they're trying to say, that kind of stuff. Just one-on-one, -on -one, five minutes, you know? Yeah. Um, and then have them go back. So the student has to come up with the draft. Mm -hmm. But as far as us giving them back a marked up draft, just very ineffective. <laughs> um, so, so that was one of the great benefits I gained. And the other was incorporating time into my labs for the process. So we scheduled time, workshops, writing workshops during lab time. So the writing fellows would come to lab um, for like half or more of the lab period to help, to help students with beginning setting up the writing project that we were doing, whatever. Um, and then the third thing was um, doing peer review. I had never done that before, having the students actually look at each other's work. So that was something that came out of the practicums. So I did that for the first time this year. Um, and I thought that was very helpful. Um, in our course, we have three major writing, well, yeah, I guess you'd call them writing assignments. We have three major writing assignments. The, the first two are actually papers that they pass in, but the third one is a PowerPoint presentation based on an experiment, but it follows the same format as a scientific paper, but, and I hadn't previously involved the writing fellows in it, but something that came from them talking about it in the practicum was that they, help the students 
work with the flow of that presentation. So we assigned half the students to come see me and the other half to see Courtney. Um, and the quality of what came back was better for that. So, and then working with Courtney was great. It's, the, work, the writing fellows I've had so far have been bio majors, but I don't think it really matters. But it's been great because she, she knows how to write a scientific paper. She knows how to write very well, grammatically, and, you know, so forth and stuff. So she, she's really been able to help the students refocus. And, and then she, she kept a, a log on Google Docs that she shared with me and Jesse. So I was able to see who came to see her and actually find out some stuff they tell her that yeah. they never tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a great experience all around. I really enjoyed having Courtney with me this year. Thank you, Peggy. Um, so to start, um, the beginning of the semester, I had a lot of fears going into it. Um, I kind of kept thinking to myself, am I really good enough to be in this position? Like, do I know enough to instruct other students? And I think that's probably a fear many of us had going into it. Um, but once I got into the classroom and started working with Peggy and working with the students, I found that it came pretty natural to me. And I actually really enjoyed working with them. And I felt like when they left, I had helped them enough. And that was another fear of mine. Like, am I going to help them enough? Or, are they going to leave here and know what to do next? Um, I found that students I, so we met with students multiple times throughout the semester because um, we had a few different writing assignments and then the group project that Peggy mentioned. Um, and I noticed that um, similar groups of students that I met with previously returned in, to work with me. So that was kind of confirmation to me, like they do find me helpful, <laughs> you know. Um, but I also think what was really rewarding was um, kind of working as a team with Peggy. Um, I think that's something not many people can say they've had the opportunity to do. Um, and I think what was great is that we kind of approached it as like, okay, you take half, I'll take half, and we'll just give them the option of coming to whoever. And you know, the fact that many of them did come to see me, I think that shows that having a writing fellow in the classroom is definitely beneficial to them and they do enjoy having that writing fellow there. Um, I think maybe there's also less intimidation having a writing fellow in the classroom because, um, you know, having, um, getting advice from a student who's also in a similar situation as them, they may take more to that than a teacher. Um, but, yeah. So I think that's how my experience went for the semester. <laughs> so I'm just going to start with a little bit of my background. Um, as Jesse stated in the beginning, I was um, my first year. I was in his composition club course, and then fall, um, spring of that same year, I was a writing fellow incorporated into that same course. Um, so, and kind of talking about what just Courtney, what Courtney just said, um, Jesse always said to me and the students. She got through it, she survived, so that means you can too. Um, so definitely, off what Courtney said, um, I think that it's very beneficial to have someone there for the students that they can come and talk to that is in the same boat as them. They've gone through the course, they know you know, the assignments, they know the professor, they know um, what's going on in the course, how you're, you know, what the professor wants in the writing, everything. Um, so I think it's very ben beneficial to have someone that's taken that course before. Um, and it was also very interesting to work with students my own age students that are in the same grade as me um, just because you get there's there's less in intimidation there's no there's no age barrier there's not like a, oh like she's a senior I, I, I'm nervous to talk to her like it we're on the same level we share other classes together they feel comfortable to me coming to up to me after other classes that we share or you know emailing me and being like hey like I'm really having trouble with this like can we talk about it and even um, I noticed even in other courses, even though I was um, included in Jesse's class, 
in any of our other courses if they if we had a writing assignment and they knew I was in that same class they'd be they'd reach out to me and they, they really would and they'd be like hey like can you take a look at this and I'm like I mean I, I can if that's what you'd like me to do um, so even though I was incorporated in just Jesse's class um, I think it helps just knowing that other people are there for them in a writing sense like knowing that they can go reach out to people other than their professors for writing help um, and then now this year I'm in a um, Bio 104 course with um, Dylan Turner, and I um, took Bio 105 and Bio 106, so kind of in the same boat as you. Um, yes, I know what they're doing, but I um, had to explain to them the first couple weeks in that I wasn't there to help them with the content stuff. I wasn't here to answer their their bio questions. I was here to teach to teach them and to guide them to be better writers and how to write about a specific thing, and not what that information is and how to actually understand that information, um, which I think was very interesting um, to switch from English to bio. Um, I was very nervous as well going into it. Um, when Jesse approached me and asked me if I wanted to be a fellow, I was very nervous. I was like, does he, does he really think my writing is this good? Like, it, can I actually do this? And then um, my first meeting with a student, I think, was pretty awful. Um, <laughs> I don't think I had an idea what I was doing. Um, and the student came back to me, and I apologized, um, <laughs> telling them I, you know, they were my first meeting. I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but um, you know, they were very, they were okay with it. So, um, but I think after meeting with them, or meeting, even at getting past that first meeting, I think really opened my eyes and helped me be a better writer a lot while I'm helping them be a better writer because they'll come to me and they'll ask me a question that I never even thought to have and then I'd be like well I'm not really sure like like let me figure that out and get back to you and then I know that question for for further um, students when they ask me that question I don't have to refer back I know that information because I've had that question before um, so I think that the writing felt program is amazing I think that it's it's um, helpful to both the tutors and the students that are that are getting this help, I um, I've heard Dylan say multiple times to me that he um, has seen a difference. He's got two of his Bio 104 labs, and he's seen a difference um, with my class that I'm involved in and the class that he doesn't have a fellow in. And he said that he's seen a difference between their writing, and I think that that alone just shows how much a writing fellow really can help. Um, whether that be just making the students more confident in their writing. I think that that's a huge thing, um, whether or not they're actually confident in what they're trying to say. Um, other times they just need to talk talk it out with somebody, like Stephen said. Sometimes you just need to bounce ideas off someone, and a lot of the times they don't feel like they can do that with their professors. So having that same level student-to-student um, -student connection, I think, really helps for them. Um, so I think it's very beneficial for everybody all around. Um, I do the same thing. I keep a log of uh, my students and when I meet with them, what we talk about, like what, what we discuss while I meet with them. That way it gives um, Dylan and Jesse, when I was in his course, um, just a little bit of idea, an idea of maybe what that specific student is struggling with or what they really, um, they really um, enjoy doing or if they have improved on something over the past you know, couple of weeks that we've talked and met. Um, I think it's really helpful to keep a log, a log of that so that um, even in the future when you meet with that student, you can be like, well, I know that you've had trouble with this before. Are you feeling that you have the same trouble now or do you feel like you have a better gra uh, grip on that? And you know that, that feedback is really great, I think. So I, I'm very thankful I'm in the writing field course. I think it's great. And I think that it's great that we're being incorporated into um, the scientific courses more. Um, I think that a lot of students look at scientific writing and it's this big like taunt like daunting thing and they're just they're really nervous about it but once they realize that you're it's just writing but you're writing about something different it's not you know fictional you're not referencing you know two different sources and putting it together you're writing about facts and I think that um, kind of simplifying that for them really helps them out so. mm -hmm. I think that's it um, I have a couple things. I'll show you my, um, and I have to go to my. I gotta go to the next page in my notes here. Um, I mean, I, I, as, as long as we're all sharing, and you know, sharing is caring. Um, you know, one of the things that is so interesting to me from my sort of my it, my perch here. Um, this is the first year I'm, I'm, I'm the writing fellows coordinator, um, and I started out years ago uh, with a 
uh, during the pilot year with a fellow in my class. I think I've had five or six different fellows over the years now. And it's so interesting because like, so they would just be sort of deployed into my class, like sort of, you know, nearly fully formed as, as tutors or developing tutors. Um, and, you know, I could work with them, you know, you, you sort of showed up in my class, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, now I'm sort of on the other side of that, right, where I'm, you know, trying to, to prepare and help students be deployed into other classes where they would, you know, sort of show up fully formed or nearly fully formed. And that's, that's been such an interesting transition to be on the other side of that and to sort of, um, you know, try to see beyond what I'm seeing in front of me. Um, you know, the other thing that sort of fits with that, Taylor, is you know, this is the first year since the Writing Fellows program started that I don't have a fellow in my class. And it's like, you know, it's like an amputation or something. It's very strange. Um, and I, you know, I had, like, you know, like Peggy was talking about, over the years, I had evolved and rethought a number of, of assignments and approaches in my class to incorporate and maximize my experience with a fellow. And you know it's it's a little it's a little weird now because you know you're not there or I don't have a I don't have a fellow to work with at least this term, and so I mean that's been an interesting you know, do with that what you will but I mean that's been a, a noticeable thing for me this semester. Um, the other thing that I, I just want to you know I mean this is sort of a little bit of cheerleading I guess but I just want to say how you know in the practicum you know so this sort of fits with you guys basically. Um, um, during the, the halfway point of the semester, I had these guys sort of do a reflection on their experiences, and they created these podcasts, and they sort of, um, they uploaded them to their e-portfolios, where we're, we're sort of storing and organizing our experiences this semester. And the other day, I went back and I listened to each of the podcasts, they're about two minutes long. And it's, it's so interesting that, you know, it's the themes that seem to emerge from everybody was that sense of not feeling confident to you know, engage with a student, feeling like I'm not a content expert and like they're gonna see me as a fraud or they're gonna expect me to do something that I don't know what to do. And you know, so that's sort of like the snapshot of the, you know, the 50 yard line. And then here we are basically you know, rounding into the week 15, the, the, the close of the semester. And I can, like, you know, I can sense it, I, I hear it, the language, the, the, the poise, the kind of ability that you guys are, are bringing to our sessions in practicum. It, it's, a different, it's a different person. And there's, there's much more confidence. And the language choices that you're using to describe experiences are you know, really, really um, you know, thoughtful and um, connect back to a number of the readings and a number of the discussions we've had. So, um, you know, that's sort of my, those are my two cents moments that I have uh, in my experience as the, the, the writing fellows coordinator. Um, I think, um, I mean, what we could do now is we could open up to some questions from this massive audience here that um, is just playing, playing us down with their hands. Um, and I have a number of other questions I could, I could ask you guys, but um, maybe we'll, we'll open it up to, to audience participation. Uh, the man with the bow tie. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I'll speak up because I'm not going to grab the mic. Uh, I guess I really, I mean, I have a lot of questions, but the one that I want to sort of ask first, and then I'll listen for a while, um, is about what is it that students write or tell you that they don't tell Peggy Fryer? In terms of their, right, so I'm going to just leave it like that. So rather than sort of provide a bunch of context, right, there was this little, like, kind of knowing thing. Like, sometimes students tell the writing fellow things they don't tell me. And I'm curious about, like, what is, where are students coming from? Yeah. I think maybe what you meant by that is, like, sometimes they come to me and they'll say, like, oh, I do not feel confident with this at all. Or I have no idea where to start. Or I don't even know where to find sources for this. And I have written some of that in the longs. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> is there anything else you? Well, just the, some of them have felt comfortable enough with you to say, wow, I really haven't gotten started on this project yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know where to begin. Mm -hmm. And you know, a student doesn't want to go to a faculty and say that. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just going to kind of chime in a little bit. I'm obviously not incorporated in her class, but I'm um, just working with professors and thing. I Oh, sorry. 
um, just working with professors and things. Thank you. Um, I do notice that you know they will come to you and they'll say like you know I'll be like how much do you have done or you know like like let's see what you started and they're like I don't have anything and you're like yeah. well, what do you mean like <laughs> and they're like well I really don't have anything like I just I just need someone to help me start this and I'm like okay like like we can do that and then you know in my lab I've seen all the time. You know, Dylan will ask, like, does anybody have any questions? Do we need clarification on anything? Does everybody understand what this is about? And they'll be like, oh, yeah, like, we're good, like, 100%, like, we've got this. And then they get to my meetings and they're like, help me. <laughs> because they just have no idea what's going on. So I think that's kind of the barrier right then is um, just that they feel more comfortable going to because they, they know that you've been in that same position. They know that you've waited till the last minute to write a paper at least once in your life. And so they're confident that they can go to you and you will understand and just be able to be like, okay, cool, like let's just let's go for it, let's just start. So I feel like that's um, one of the bigger things too. Yeah, I mean, and just to, to sort of piggyback on that a little bit, I mean, so you're you're working with Dylan in, in yeah. that way, um, and you know, if we think about our experience when you were, you were a fellow in my class, having just come out of my class, um, you know, there was a kind of du double bonus win yeah. too because you you sort of brought some of that content experience, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, I remember many, many conversations we would have about, you know, you're providing a kind, a kind of intel to me about, you know, where students are, because as you say, they're, they're really reluctant to be like, yeah, I got nothing, right? But, you know, you're, you're able to do that. And, um, you know, having been through the course and sort of knowing some of my expectations, you, you know, you can provide to them some insights and, you know, I, I don't want to say hacks, but right, right. But there is this way in which you can kind of translate mm -hmm. to the student in a way that maybe my presence doesn't really necessarily right. you know fit with that, and that that was really beneficial. And especially in your class too, um, where we always, you know, we would read the piece and then we would always discuss it after. We would always make sure that we had a deep conversation about it. We would answer any questions that anybody had. Um, and I think that me being able to pull questions from last, from the year before, from your course before that I had experienced, or the questions that I had that we were able to work through, I think really helped um, my students with you my, in the spring, yeah. um, because maybe they weren't thinking about that. Maybe answering that question for them or bringing up that question for them really like opened their eyes, and they were like, "Oh, like I didn't even look at it from that way." And like now I'm able to look at it that way and now I can like I can kind of branch off of that and go and go forward. Yeah, that I mean that comes from the extension of working with you know over semesters, yeah. Yes, Kevin. So I want to ask Taylor uh, something, maybe try to connect a couple of things. So you know, right now we're talking about how the, the greater freedom students feel in speaking with the fellow about what's really happening with mm -hmm. their writing. But you also said uh, earlier, Taylor, um, that in, in terms of keeping the log, you were able to, you and students were able to look back and notice things that you had talked about before and then sort of reassess mm -hmm. at this later point. So I'm wondering what, what you have noticed or what others have noticed in terms of the student's ability to talk about their own work or describe their challenges or have goals for writing, mm -hmm. right? And how that seems, how that maybe changes from start to end with your, your time with them. Um, I've noticed not so much um, in my Bio 104 class just because it's not so much that you're pulling from other sources, but I notice um, a lot in Jesse's course, a lot of my, not a lot, a, a few of my students had um, a rough time being able to read the content and then find the important pieces that they needed to bring into their papers to really make it come alive. And I think that being able to look back through those logs and, you know, they're being able to look at it and be like, oh, like, you're right. Like, I, I noticed that I pulled this section or I pulled this quote out of this piece of work that didn't do anything for my writing. It didn't help it in any way. It didn't, it didn't add to anything. It wasn't, there was no conversation there. So I think that um, them being able to look back at it and be like, oh, like, I understand what you mean. And then them being able to look at their new piece of writing and saying, okay, I'm doing the same thing. I need to go back through my quotes or I need to go back through the conversation that I'm trying to have with this source and um, reevaluate and try to figure out and find other things that really do bring this paper to life and bring the conversation that they're trying to have um, out into the open. And, and if I just to follow up a little do, I mean, do you find, or have you all found, you know, are the students 
in this mix of students who you're seeing and the different personalities, right? Um, when students come to you, are there, are, do you see them becoming better able to lead the conversation they have with you, you know, as compared to, say, those who come in and say, tell me what to do? Um, I think the, the first time that you meet with any student, I feel like they're very dependent on your leadership throughout that first meeting because they're not really sure how it's going to go. Um, so I know that personally, whenever I meet with a student for the, you know, for the first time, I always sit them down. I'm like, okay, you know, this is what my idea of how this meeting is going to go. You know, we can look over your paper. We can talk about um, any confusion that you might have, anything like that, and then we can work through it. And then the next time that we meet, you know, I'll start off by saying, what, what do you, what do you have to say about this, or what do you want to talk about first? And then after they've said everything that they need to say or ask any questions that they need to ask, and then once we've looked it over or once I answer their questions, I'll ask, I'll start to ask them questions like. Do you think that what do you what do you think could you could add to this to make it better, or what do you think that um, what strategy do you think you could use to really open this up or dig a little deeper into the conversation? Um, so I think that, like I said, the first time they are really dependent on you, but afterwards I feel like as long as you prompt them, you prompt them with questions, you prompt them with you know, well why is this or how, why did you decide to do this? Um, I think that they're they become more open to um, leading the discussion and leading the meetings that you have with them. And, and Courtney, I mean, just to kind of pick up on that, did, you, you saw re returning students, right? Did you um, did you notice a, a reassessment from your perspective and and or the students' perspective about the work that they're doing? I mean, can you, can you speak to that at yeah, all? Yeah. Um, so, like I said, I, students come back to me again, um, and I noticed from the first time. Um, they were, they kind of just sat there, like waited for me to cue them and, you know, ask them questions. And then the second time they kind of came in, sat down, and it, it seemed like they felt more comfortable with me in a sense. And they were asking me questions. They were um, going to certain parts of their writing and asking me specific things about it. And I think being in the classroom and meeting with those students over and over again. Um, you kind of form a relationship with them and I think that's so special because then they do feel more comfortable with you and yeah. yeah I mean a different venue thing right mm -hmm. so it's in the classroom as you know a tutor and out of the classroom as a tutor but during office hours right that that, that carryover um, can be a really valuable tool or a really valuable thing for building rapport yeah. with these students. Um, I think too um, maybe Jumping back to the log a little bit, um, I think that, like Courtney said, I think it's it's really interesting to see the students that come in to your meetings and they sit down with their paper and they flip to page three and they're like, "This is wrong. Like, like something's going on here." And it 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 makes me feel good and it makes it makes you know that you're doing something right. That they can sit down and they can pick out something that they know is wrong, or that they think you know it doesn't sound right or it's not exactly how they're trying to voice their idea. Um, so I think that doing the logs and having, you know, being able to reflect on those logs really gives them an idea, well, it gives them another person's perspective, for one, being able to talk about those problems, um, and that way they are able to go back through and kind of pick out the things that they're not really happy with, because um, I always used to tell my students last year, they need to be happy with the writing. I said, if you're not happy with it, nobody's going to be happy with it, because you're not going to give, you're not going to be giving off that positive vibe if you're not happy with your writing. And so I always made sure, you know, that they were, whether it was something that they were interested about or not, there's always a way to find something that you're passionate about with what you're writing. No matter what it is, you can, you can always connect it to something that you feel passionate about. And so um, I don't think that, um, I think that when they struggle to find something that they're passionate about in their writing, they're not going to enjoy doing it. And if they're not going to enjoy doing it, you're, it's not going to be the outcome that they want. So if I can piggyback on your log comments and then maybe move them over to like what tutoring looks like in a lab classroom. At the at Student Academic Success Center in our writing consultations there, we've taken uh, to asking the student to log at the end of the meeting in the last four or five minutes. And that could be a really nice kind of like compliment to like, this is what it looks like from the tutor view, this is what it looks like from the student view, student view. and then, you know, then, then there's a lot to work with there over time. But I'm really curious. I know what it, it looks like to work with students in an English classroom. What does it look like when you guys are doing live tutoring in the lab and you say you allocate time 
know, in the lab or itself, I mean, one-on-one, -on -one, small so groups, what does it look like? In our lab, we have, well, in the labs, we have six tables, and there are four students per table. So, um, what we've been doing, when we did the peer review thing, we had the students, I, we gave them a form to fill out, and they would look at each other's papers and, and write down. And so while they were starting with that, then we just went from table to table. And so if there were common issues, we would talk about those. Um, but we really talked to each student and just, you know, looked at their looked at their work and answered their questions that they had about whether this service was right or that was right. And we were able to, the last time, I thought we were getting really good there towards the end. <laughs> um, we were able to really identify, okay, you, you would definitely benefit from another meeting. You know, you got to go, go see Courtney or me. Um, and we could really, and then, you know, we could say, okay, you're, you're doing great. Uh, so it was, but yeah, we just go from table to table. And we take about an hour. Yeah. I think too, oh sorry, I'm oh, sorry. Um, I think too, in the lab setting, um, something that Dylan and I kind of did is, um, in the beginning of, I feel, any writing assignment in um, any of the labs, they always have content questions. So I f for the first you know few minutes, Dylan would be the one you know, primarily going around answering any questions that he could. If I could answer the question, then I would do so. So he was bouncing all over the room. But um, he would answer most of the content questions. And then afterwards, once they got into the writing and they realized, like, I'm not quite sure how to put this, or I'm not sure, like, this is what I'm thinking, but how do I put this onto paper? I feel like that's when I would kind of step in and, and um, help them kind of figure that out. Whereas Dylan was really mostly just, um, yeah, like, like, this is where you find your sources, or this is really what you should be talking about this is what you should be focusing on like that kind of thing so yeah I, was, I mean from some of what you're saying it sounds like you kind of end up becoming a reading coach as well which yeah. i think is wonderful yeah. um <laughs> maybe we should talk about that program too um yes. but, uh, <laughs> i would say i have three years <laughs> well i've i've started utilizing the, the student academic support center yeah uh, more in my classes for students that I think need or, or, or maybe benefit from a little more that I'm in a position to give in a certain situation. Um, I think I have some things to thank you for. Um, how do you think the Writing Tutor Program and SASE kind of work together or dovetail or do you, do you what's the, the overlap there or the, do, do you sometimes send students on to SASE for further support or work with them or at least how does it all come together? I guess I can start. Um, so last year, um, they weren't together. Like, they weren't, if I'm correct anyway, they, they weren't really integrated. Um, and then this year, we do have um, some of the fellows, I think anyway, that are, that go, that they are based out of SASE. They, um, they work f from SASE. Um, I don't, just because I, I don't actually know why I decided not to, but... Yeah, that's true. It's still not true. Um, right. Um, so, and I, and I would also say that we've had a long history at SASE of hiring former yes. writing fellows. Yes. Yeah. So there's there's been a you know one, once you're done there, mm -hmm. then she can make a little better buck. Yeah. You know, come to work with right. us, yeah. and and your skills you know reach even further. Mm -hmm. um, so I think to answer your question, um, I think I definitely have um, because like Sinead was saying earlier, it's when we meet with our students, it's we try to go as global as we can. We try to pick out the big things before going in and being like, oh, like you missed a comma here, like this is grammatically incorrect, like this, this sentence structure is wrong. Like we try to find the bigger things, the ideas, the, the meat of what they're trying to do first. And then um, I think if we have time or if they come back specifically for the little things, then we'll focus on that. Um, I know that, um, that Sassy does the the, they'll edit your essays or um, they'll review your essays or is that is we, am I we, wrong we in saying that? <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do the same thing that you're talking about. Yeah. And, but but if they've gone to you for the content and mm -hmm. they are at that editing stage, right. we'll help them do that. Yes, yes, and um, a couple of my students have said that too um, from this year actually that they met with me and then they've gone to Sassy and talked over those like sentence structure errors and things like that. Um, so I think that in a way that's how they kind of connect. But um, other than that, I'm not really. Yeah, I, 
I know that, so all three of you guys, the current practicum folks are, you know, you straddle, um, you know, you're in SASE as tutors, but you're also um, writing fellows, right? So there's a pretty heavy overlap with the current um, practicum setup in that way. We're really, um, you know, um, in working in concert with, with SASE and, you know, kind of trying to see what we can get some synergy out of that for sure. Yeah, I just think of it as, too, as modeling, you know, modeling behavior and developing a habit. You know, so I've seen students oftentimes in their second year and I think building what's happening on in the first year, and I just sort of hope having a writing fellow integrates it, although I have pretty well established, you know, before the writing fellows program came online. But it, it makes it more seamless and easier and more efficient, but then the key thing is the students are now have the experience of working with, with somebody and you hope that they can then carry that forward, that practice, that behavior into their subsequent semesters and work with SASE. So I think it's kind of modeling the behavior that, that can be iterated or carried forward. I think it's really important too. At SASE we depend on the training that the writing fellows get um, in that initial practicum and then we build on it with tutor training additionally. But I, I think that repetitive visits, so yeah. if, you, if they have a great um, encounter with a writing fellow early on in their career, yeah. they're more likely to come exactly. to SASE. And if they come to SASE right. and have another good experience, yeah. we got them every right. semester for the rest of their career. And suddenly the writing uh, curriculum goes from one class or two classes yeah. to 20 classes. You, you see this, right? I mean, you, you've seen this from, we've had many conversations about this, right, with students who you know, we've had, a, had a fellow embedded in my class and now that student is, you know, continuing to visit you guys in SASE after that experience, and, right. you know, kind of the momentum continues on. Right. And I, I think that's one of those things, you know, the university is, you know, needs to be committed to the idea that writing is not just the purview of the English department, right? That everybody's responsible for teaching the kinds of writing. And I remember seeing students that I saw in the first year, by the time they get to me, they're showing me their junior and senior research projects, and biology and anthropology and all the other places that I see them and students who I went wow, wow I wonder if that student's ever going to make it you know to be able to write their way out of a paper bag and all of a sudden they're wow intellectuals framing questions writing you know it's but, awesome you know now that Arthur stepped out I mean, I thought I wanted to I mean there are two things I mean I wanted to say I mean, you and hear from the fellows I mean you're embedded in the courses right a student you know when would a student come to see you about the course, you know, the assign writing an assignment that came from the course versus when they might avail themselves of mm -hmm. the tutor, who, you know, at a, in a drop in or even by an appointment, uh -huh. right? Yeah. So just commenting on what it feels like to be embedded, um, and and right, and then connected to that, what it's been like for you to work with the instructor. I mean, you've talked a lot about working with the students, but you know, what's it like for you? to be talking to um, the people who made up the assignments and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, why don't we uh, start, I mean, maybe we'll kind of do a lightning round here and uh, <laughs> hear a little bit from Steve. What, what's been your experience? Um, I know, she's sitting right next to you. Maybe Arthur should come back in and she step out. Exactly. Um, I guess, I guess I'd say it was a, it was a good experience, um, especially because, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> well, I mean, well, we didn't work together as, as yeah. much, yeah. I think, as Peggy yeah. and the, um, the other writer fellows worked together. Okay. Well, I want to hear this, but I think the, uh, I mean, maybe another thing, or maybe, maybe this is the kind of the version two of the question, like, because you have worked with an instructor and talked about their assignments and talked about things, do you find yourself going to see your other professors and talking about their the assignments that you're working on with them? So transfer. That, how does that, yeah. yeah, like how do you feel talking to all of these faculty and getting to know how they're, how they work <laughs> and how you can work with that? So if that's an easier way of answering okay. that kind of question. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, I guess, yeah, that, that does make it a little more, I guess, comfortable, as you put it, to like talk with, uh, talk with faculty, talk with my professors in that way. Um, which, I mean, I guess I have done a few times, like, 
I know I go to Jesse a lot talking about like things for the right fellows practicum, um, for instance. But so I guess yes, yeah. It does, it does make it more so I'll be seeing you next week. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. Not in practice. I wouldn't hurt to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Shane, what about oh, yeah. shooting the number? Um, I agree. I think that working with a faculty or um, professor, kind of in being not and not being the student, being like this in between, mm -hmm. gives you almost like an insider perspective of what um, you know what they're looking for, and not just what. You know, they tell obviously they tell the, the students their, what they want and what they're looking for on the rubric, but being able to ask your own questions, I guess, and then developing a relationship that um, is almost like this that you have with the students. So, like the tutor with the student is this equal relationship, I guess, and then that I think also translates bet between me and the and Emma, who is the um, my the lab instructor. Um, and I didn't feel as, you know, she wasn't so much of a superior, I guess, and it was more like equal. So it was easier to ask her questions. Um, and then from that, I've definitely gone to see a lot of professors this semester just because, you know, my classes have been difficult. But I don't know if maybe it was being able to work with Emma um, closely just made it more comfortable to talk to my professors in general. So I agree with what Shanine and Steven said. Um, I think being in that like that middleman kind of, um, you see both sides. So you see the professor's side, and then you see the student side. And I think when you go to see your teachers, you kind of take that into consideration and think about that when you're asking questions or asking about the assignment. So I think it makes a difference. And I would say it, I probably did think about that and go and see my professors more because of it. Um, I feel like transferring over from um, the high school stage to the first year and college stage um, is very different when you're talking about going to see your professors or your teachers because um, in high school you're in that class and like you have class time to be able to ask those questions or um, to kind of level with your professor um, in a way that I feel in a lecture hall you don't get to, you know, because either you have a class coming out after that or you, you just don't have the time, um, something like that. So I feel like having to go on your, on your own time to go see this professor in a different room, in a different building, is something that is really intimidating for people, um, knowing that they have to be like, that they have to email this professor and say like, can I meet with you at this time? Like, is that gonna, is it okay? And I feel like in high school you didn't have to do that. Um, you just, you walk into the classroom and you're like, hey, like, I got a question, and it was just a, you know, and yeah, yeah, you're all in the same, you're all in the same place. You don't have to go out of your way to go talk to this professor. Um, and I think that here, you know, they have office hours. You have to be able to meet with them during those times. Um, and I think that that's something that was difficult for me at least last year. And then um, working with Jesse definitely opened it up. I was able to make those small connections in the beginning and you know, like you know introduce myself to the professor at the end of class and just be like you know like I really enjoyed your lecture today I thought that you you know I thought that the way that you talked about this really helped me understand it more um, and then later on be able to go into their office hours and feel more comfortable speaking to them um, just making those little connections in the beginning um, so I think that definitely working with a with a faculty member helps kind of um, like flatten out that relationship so that it's not so daunting to go and have to talk to a different professor because it's just like as a writing fellow you tell your students you know go talk to them like they want to help you but you didn't realize that when you first started meeting with your professors you're like they don't want to help like they, they're mad when I want to meet with them like they don't want to meet with me but you, you realize that now you realize that, like they really do want to help you like that's why they're that's why they're professors they want to help you and so I think being able to like you said be that middle ground be that middle level um, and being able to relay that message to your students and to yourself, being able to say, they really do want to help you. So, like, just go see them. Like, what are they going to do? Tell you no? Probably not. So, but be sure to flatter them before. Right, 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 right. That's important. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Michael. Um, so, we could maybe do the lightning round, go in the other direction, or maybe not. Maybe we just do a loop. Uh, 
So this is a question for the fellows. So I, uh, both Anna and Peggy, you talked a little bit about how working with a fellow led you to change some practices. And in terms of teaching, in terms of thinking about your course and what you're able to do. And I'm really curious, uh, you know, so Catherine has asked about this, what we might call transfer, or one kind of transfer, right? So you be, being comfortable working with one kind of faculty member in a partnership, does that, like, being able to see the other side a little bit, does that reduce your barrier to feeling comfortable going and talking to your, your current faculty? I'm curious about uh, how your work as a writing fellow, helping students develop as writers, and paying attention to, like, you know, the writing process, um, from a kind of a theoretical perspective that you're getting from the practicum, how that might, how does that help, has that changed your own thinking about and your own writing practice as a student who has to write papers in classes? I'm curious about that. I don't know which way you want to do the lightning round on that. You want to take a short first yeah. one at this? It's a good question. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a good question because I, I realize that a lot when I'm talking to other students, all this advice I'm giving them or things that they should be doing. Like, oh, I should be doing this too. Um, yeah, and I'm still actually working up to that point where I'm actually taking my own advice that I'm willing to give to other people that way. Um, you know, like getting ahead of schedule, doing multiple drafts, going through and like proofreading things. Like, I still have trouble getting myself to do that most of the time. Um, but I'm hoping I can be better about it in the future. Um, start to take some of my own advice in that yeah. way. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, we're, we're talking about you know outward, inward stuff here, right? Yeah. Like you're you're pu pushing this stuff out and you know absorbing this stuff in. Um, what about you, Shane? Um, I think you know coming into the before I was a fellow, I kind of thought that my process, my, my writing process was okay, like it was pretty good. Um, but then as you start to work with students and you start to ask them questions and, you know, guide them to um, improve their writing, you realize that there's all sorts of different ways in which you can go about the writing slash revision process. And the more that I work with different students who have different, um, you know, who think differently, and when I have to kind of create new ways to guide them, I guess, um, the more the like more ideas that come to me, I'm able to then, you know, use it for different um, different writing pieces that I do in different classes. And I don't think I ever would have thought of them unless I had to tell someone else how or like, how to do it. Um, and you know, like they say, you don't really learn something until you have to teach it. And so I think, you know, being a writing tutor and helping teach um, these ways and methods to improve writing definitely helps, has helped me um, with my writing. Mm. Before we get to the next part of the lightning round, <laughs> can I just add one little wrinkle, or no, it's not really a wrinkle. Um, I'd really like to hear an example. If you could think of like, if there's an example of like, hey, you know, this is a, like you're working up the nerve to actually like take your own advice, right? That's what it sounds like, right? And you're saying, hey, you know what, I'm seeing there's like a whole, like a raid on the table or a whole different set of ways I can approach a writing process. I'm pretty comfortable with the one I have now, but wow, there's a lot more available to me. And as we move down the line, maybe it'd be useful to, I'd like just like, to, you know, if there's something you remember, like, oh yeah, I had that assignment and I kind of tweaked something a little bit in the process, in my writing process, partly from, or maybe you're just like, no, I'm great and this, I had the writing fellows thing down before I showed up. <laughs> Yeah, Michael wants you to quote. That's a tough one. Um, or you just like ignore my question. That's <laughs> um, well, I'm in Professor Anderson's class, and I feel like a lot of the writing we do in there isn't my strongest area. Um, you said it, I didn't. <laughs> and I think like we're constantly telling the students like. It's a process, you know, go see people at Sassy if you need help, go see your teacher. And I've actually gone and seen other writing fellows at Sassy for help because I felt like I needed help in that area. Um, and I think the writing process I had in different um, subject areas was different from how I approached your writing um, or writing assignments. Um, so I think 
that could be an example of how I had to, you know, I wrote one way, but I really had to adjust that and adapt to kind of think about it in a different way, in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think that when I first started writing last year in Jesse's class, um, I was a very, like, I outlined. It was like six pages of outline. Like, and then I would go through and be like, this is garbage, that's garbage, this is okay. And then I would kind of build off of that. And then um, after I started meeting with students and they just didn't benefit from outlines. They didn't, they didn't really find the point in it. They were more of the free spirit I wish I was sometimes where they just kind of write and they just they just write and then they stop when they don't have anything else to say and then they are able to go back through that and see um, oh like this is like this is perfect this is really what I wanted to say and then like sometimes they'd be like well like that's not quite what I want to say so they kind of get rid of that and they kind of go through and, and um, sift out what they didn't really like or what they did really like um, and I found myself doing that every once in a while um, I was in David Smith's Problems of Knowledge course last year, and um, it was a philosophy course. So um, it's a different way of writing. You have to think about so many different things that you don't normally, you wouldn't normally think about. Um, so being able to look back and say, you know, outlining isn't going to help me with this project. I have to sit down, think about what they're asking me, and then just start writing. And then once I got six pages in, and I was like, okay. I don't have anything else to say, then being able to go back through and, and pick out what I liked and what I didn't like and then being able to kind of go off that um, I think was really beneficial and something that I don't think I would have done had I not had to meet with these other students and find ways to help them help themselves. Um, so I think that's one way. And then another way, um, just kind of like in a structural, like developmental stage, um, a lot of the times um, introductions are, are difficult for, some, for a lot of people, um, I noticed last year. So something that we did was we would just skip it. You just write the instruction last, which I mean is pretty common, I feel. Um, something that I never, ever, ever did. And again, in David Smith's class, I feel like it's difficult to be able to introduce what you're gonna say before you know how you're gonna say it. And so being able to write what I'm actually, what my ideas, put my, put my ideas on paper and actually um, say what I'm trying to say and then going back and being able to introduce it and say like, okay, like this is actually what I'm going to be talking about. I think um, was also really beneficial in my own writing. Um, and again, I do not, I don't think I would have done that had I not had to kind of work with these students in the ways that that, that helped them. So I think that um, those are just kind of like the structural things that that I have noticed. You know, we're, so we're we're at three ten. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, please, please. Okay, I just want to say a couple things about the writing fellows themselves and how they've all said, "Oh, before I started this, I really didn't know if I was going to be good enough." We all say that. <laughs> mm, we do, and then we find out that yes, we are because the students aren't going to ask us a complex question based on advanced knowledge that we don't have. <laughs> usually, usually, <clears throat> but anyway, and and also as you said, um, this is a great benefit for you because you're you're doing the best type of learning, which is teaching. It's really the best way to learn something, as whether it's a skill or knowledge or whatever. And also, I think this program benefits you guys in that this is a step towards your professional development. Because I view you while you're in my working with me as my cohort, you're my peer, and so I really want for you to see things from my side of the room, yeah, yeah. you know, and I want you to feel like you and I are a team, or you know, we're on the same, on the, we're working together as a team. You're, I don't view you as a student in that context. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really great, a good thing for you to experience because going forward, it's going to be more of that and less of you being the one absorbing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, and, you know, we should probably close this up, but I mean, I, I think, Taylor, we had the, a similar experience, too, okay. where, you know, we were strategizing about student success and really getting granular about, yeah. you know, how, how could we best approach this, where we were, you know, really rowing in the same direction at the same time, and that, you know, it, it, 
it didn't seem like, okay, here, do this. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that directed right. top down, absorb this information, right? It was like, you know, what your insights you're bringing to me, we're, I'm sharing things with you, and we're, you know, really moving, um, you know, in lockstep towards something, uh, a goal. So, um, you know, sort of same, same there. Um, any, any other words we want to add to this to close this up? I'd just up? like to say thank you to everybody involved. Yeah. Faculty, students, coordinators. Prior coordinators. It's just, it's just such a good thing. He wants us to go on. Well, yeah, it's, it's well, just an yeah. unmitigated good. But you know. there's more to say. I mean, there's more to say. Yeah. Um, there's always. There's always. There's more always. To say. Yeah. For sure. And and something I'd like to hear more. I mean, I, I do wish that there were more. You know, I'd like to hear more about how the biology department, for example, is is thinking about the work that you're doing in these um, 100 and 200 level courses and how that figures in with their ideas about writing and creative if there were more folks You're, in, you're, you're involved in development in yeah. the, the biology department's writing. Yeah, we have a and, communication yeah. plan that we're, we've kind of sketched out yeah. um, and we're, we're working on elaborating that. So, yeah. You know, I haven't had a lot of discussion with my mm -hmm. peers in the biology department about the writing program for their and I think that we should yeah. not talk more about it. Um, for, a, for example, in one you know in one large department where so many you yeah. know when you you've had multiple sections of labs yeah. over multiple semesters now. Yeah. I know for me this having this experience has emphasized yeah. just on um, how we can do so much more to improve writing yeah. in the sciences. And, and students' conceptions about what writing is. I mean, there's so much in the practical session we had. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, which you know, we're also. I mean, this is so you've got English students in the in the biology. Yeah. You had you know biology yeah, you had students a mix, in the composition. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah, But we had primarily you know science students mm -hmm. and science courses. I, I think I was the only one was the only, that was in a writing English that was in yeah. English course. Yeah. yeah. But learned a lot about what do students think about writing in relation to. Which I think really helped me for this year yeah. to be able to take what we learned last yeah. year, where it was primarily we were talking about science, scientific writing, yeah. and then being able to apply it this year with my 104 course. Mm -hmm. I think it. I think it really. It was a good introduction for um, mm -hmm. my place in this. In this but it'd be great to have that same kind of focus group with more, you know, science faculty mm -hmm. present. You know, not those of you who are working with fellows, but for them to hear. Well, here's what you know your students think about writing. So anyway, thank you.